Dr. Dr. Green Thumb podcast <laughs> right here on YouTube. It's live. Uh, oh, yeah. We, we got uh, C minus E zone and our special guest today, Trish Killer. Hey. Yes. Formerly up, known as Trish Toledo. Yeah. Right? Trish Toledo. You said it right. That's yep. right. I know I said it right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? One of these guys might not say it right. I can read. They might say it the white boy way Toledo. Toledo. Hello, this Hi. is Toledo. Hello. Um, and it's good to have you up on here. Oh, it's awesome to be here. Thank you so much. It, you know, what's crazy is that um, we had Mr. Cartoon up in here uh-huh. the other day because yeah. we do a lot of work with him. He's been my boy for over 20 years. And he came over here and he was like, hey, man, you know, check this. And, and, and he, he, he put us on to a lot of young artists that are now doing Upcoming. the old school style. Yeah. yeah, the old school style music, like the oldie style. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you were one of the ones he actually oh, was Mr. talking Cartoon? about. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Mr. Cartoon. That was, that, I thought it was uh, pretty tight that we actually got to, you know, talk to you right yeah. after that. Well, you know, Sweet. what inspired you to do that style of music? Um, well, I was trying to find yeah, something that um, fitted my voice, suited my voice. I tried different. Oh, that's the filter I needed. Yeah, you can <laughs> grab the other one. We'll fix that okay. one. Okay. Um, yeah, I was finding something that was softer, something that was more sentimental, something... Well, because to me, singing is therapy, right? So the songs that I choose, it's something that I've gone through, something that I could relate to, and uh, that's how I would pick the songs. And at that time of my life, that point in my life, I wanted to just stick to oldies, you know, heartbreak. Right. I found love, finally, so I wanted to sing about love, and, and that's what started the whole thing. But I grew up with it, you know, my father... Uh, introduced me to it. He was a piano player, singer, and all that. So mm. that's where I got. So that was that music from. history before that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Since I was little. It was in your blood, pretty much. It was in my blood, yeah. But that you know that's cool because a lot of us that that grew up out here in in, in uh, California, you know, a lot of our parents and you know older brothers and sisters or whatever, depending on what their what your age demographic is, you know, a lot of us grew up to those type of musical influences because mm-hmm. I remember list as a kid listening to KRLA. And listening mm. to all those old school songs there. Yeah. I think it's almost like if you grew up in any kind of hood, like... That's it, what they play. I yeah. mean, that's really what it is. At least, like, a lot of, like, the, the OG scene, because I don't really see a lot of the newer generation, like, playing a lot of the stuff, but it's, like, a lot of the OG fools that, like, really, like, keep this kind of th- culture alive, the oldies, like, they really, like, take pride in, like, oh, yeah. like preserving that. It's like, hey, man, this is some real shit, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah true. It's, yeah. it's true, you know, because the music, it's clean, it's for the family, it's for everybody, and not to mention, like, the beat and the rawness of the music that was produced at the time. Like, you just feel it, yeah. you know? You feel that great energy. When, yeah. when, when you came out with uh, Somebody Please or you did that cover, like, yeah. the, well, I mean, I could be wrong. Was that, like, your second, like, uh, um, chance going at it? Because I, I feel like, you know, when you first came out, you're like, you know what? I'm going to give this a try one more time. And it's like, did you change that style before that? Or, like, was yeah. there a transition? What was that like? So, <clears throat> I grew up singing everything. Uh, I started... I think my first real gig when I got paid was when I was 18 and I joined my dad's cumbia, like, band. (laughs) So I was doing cumbia. Selena stuff. Yeah, Yeah. Selena, Sonora Dinamita, La India, I did salsa, all that stuff. And then I was like, all right, this is cool and all, but... You you didn't feel that was you. No. So then um, when I was younger, like, in middle school, high school, I would go to a lot of, like, ska, reggae, punk shows and stuff. So then um, I started going to um, Harvard College, I took a music class, and then that's when uh, this musician came up to me asking if I wanted to sing for their ska band. So I was like, ah, you know, I've always wanted to try it. So I gave it a shot. I was in it for five years, but it was more of a hobby. You know, yeah, we were yeah. just playing backyard shows. That's you still you still didn't feel connected no. to that. And then I have well, I have a son. He's thirteen right now, but he was like four or five at the time. And I was like, saying, taking me anywhere, you know, like I need to <coughs> stop. And also, actually, with that band, I was trying to do. I was trying to have them do uh, oldies, like reggae, rock steady oldies. Like mm, come That would have been a dope combination. I know, but they weren't about it. So mm. I'm like, eh, well, you know what, guys? I'm out of here. Yeah. You know, like, I love you guys, but I'm out of here. I tried it, like, acoustic, me and a guitarist, but I just gave up on it. I put it on the shelf for, like, five years. Yeah. And then um, my dad had an incident three years ago. That's when it, this all started, three years. I think it's been three years. Right. Um, he, he, he suffered from a stroke, so I knew, like, how much it meant for him for me to continue the music legacy or whatever. Yeah. So that's when I picked it up again, and that's when I released Somebody and, and, Please and all that. And did you, so you did that as a tribute to your father? Yes. 
and that and then you found your voice in yes. that that style of music. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And you and you've uh, since then worked with you know my bro Baby Bash, Frankie J, yeah, MC Magic. MC Magic. How, how did that feel when you started getting those collaborations in? It was surreal. I was like, I never saw this in my life plan ever. Um, it was, it was a, such an amazing feeling that, you know, I'm, I'm very, I feel very honored and blessed to have shared th- this opportunity with them and have a nice connection. You know, when we're at venues yeah. backstage, we talk to each other like. You know, known. what's it, what's it, what's it like working with Bash? Oh my God, he's funny. He's hilarious, right? <laughs> He is hilarious. I love, he has a bunch of awesome metaphors and he can rap to anything. So that's great. Yeah. <laughs> and, he's I, always, and he always has a good weed too. He should do stand up comedy. He should. I thought he should. He definitely he should. He should, should take a run. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's hella funny. He's a character. He's yeah. funny. I was, I was going to ask you, what, what what's it like working with? Because I've seen you on lineups with groups that like are considered legendary. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. some of like some of those groups, like the only way you get them is if you buy it in vinyl. That's how you get their music. You know? Mm-hmm. So what's it like sharing the stage with like, Groups that have been there through generations of like seeing music change and like what do they tell you? Because I'm, I'm, you know, being being in the music game, like it's kind of weird. Like the new people don't really either fuck with you or they or they hate you. You know, at the yeah. same time, so it's like, what's it like from getting like that feedback from those kind of OGs? Yeah, from the legends. Like, do they, how do they embrace you? I felt like I was serving my purpose. You know, I felt like I was meant to be there, and um, those are people. You know, I, I I admire, I look up to, and and. I've I've gotten a few like I've I've spoken to Brenton Wood before. Very awesome. He's cat. amazing. He even told me a story. Legendary. I hope I'm not twisting his words, but I'm pretty sure he told me that he was ready to give up too, and then he came out with Oogum Boogum, and that's what. Classic right there. Yeah. So that Classic. was inspiring. Very inspiring to hear, and you know, whenever I get a chance to to chat with them and see, you know, their story where they came from, I, t- I try to. Take if that. you could, if you could work with any any of those artists who. Might have been an inspiration. Who would it be? From the from all the like the oldie legends. Yeah. You know, it's definitely still Brent Wood, man. Right. I seen him at a high school one time, and I remember telling my boyfriend, "Man, I want to perform on it with him." Yeah. And then, uh, and then we went to another oldie show, Woman to Woman, at the Microsoft, and they had like the low riders on the stage. And Betty Wright. Him, Betty Wright, yeah. yeah. And Barbara Mason. Yeah. And then um, I told my boyfriend, "Man, imagine if I was to <laughs> sing on that stage with this lineup. Like I would." That would be a dream come true. And then, you know, a few months or a year later passes. <laughs> and then it happened. It's there. You see that, people? Let me let me let me just <laughs> tell crazy. you like this. You can manifest that shit by mm-hmm. saying it. Mm-hmm. You, mm-hmm. She manifested it. I manifested that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's good to say these great things to yeah. yourself. Yeah. Cause I believe that if you say it, you can do it. Yeah. True. You know, and that's awesome that that you got you know, to that position, you know, because yeah. most people get defeated, like you said, yeah. right? Um, a lot of talented people throughout the course of trying to find who they are as an artist, you know, they get some doors slammed in their face or, you know, some letdowns happen or someone fucks them over in this industry because this industry is unfortunately very, very unkind. Very cutthroat. Heartless. It's cutthroat <laughs> and heartless, Cold you know. Um, the music industry yeah. has been since the 40s and 50s. You know what I mean? So it's 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 tough to get through and and it's tough to stay doing it when you have so many defeats that happen. And it's great to see when somebody perseveres though that knows like, you know what? I got this. Yeah. I just have to find which which path I'm on what is me the most. And it's great that you yeah. found it in that way because you probably, you know, wouldn't have found it unfortunately if that had not, you know, yeah. that situation happened it's with your true. father. So Although it was like a, you know, obviously a fucked up thing. Yeah. But a great thing but happened it, yeah, from it. Yeah, it was a blessing in disguise, I guess. You know, now he's living with us and, and everything's great. Yeah. Uh, before that, I was actually in the weed industry, in the cannabis industry. Yeah. And my my whole goal was to, like, be the manager of the shop or, right. you know, like, do something important. That was my dream. Yeah. But then when that happened with my dad, I was like, no, I'm, I'm, you know, you know what? I'm going to pursue what I feel I was meant to do. to do yeah, yeah. nice it, and that's it, when i took the other it was your destiny one yeah. way or another it's just yeah. it took you the time to get there mm-hmm. what, what do you feel about that the cannabis industry right now i mean like so many changes have happened yeah. and like the 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 our our state government and mm-hmm. obviously the federal government who still doesn't recognize it but most importantly our yeah. state government allowed a 
fucked up taxation that just happened, and mm. we keep talking about it. But I, I say this, right? You know, in spite of that taxation, I think we're still in a good trajectory because, I mean, finally it's it's legal, and you can go get right. good, clean medicine or, you know, recreational herb mm. at these spots because, you know, they're regulated. They have to test. But, I mean, it's changed, I mean, from, like, yeah. 10 years ago to now. Yeah, well, I was in it uh, six years ago. So I was in it for six years. So I seen, you know, yeah. the first shop I worked at, we were doing a routine like, all right, we might get raided. So this is what you got to do. And what <laughs> like you a fire do. drill. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I can't. So then I found this other shop and they were like grandfathered in or whatever. So it was nicer, but we still had to be, you know, low yeah. key, watch out for narcs and stuff like that. But yeah, when, when it started becoming legalized it was a it, well it's a love hate thing yeah because i grew a relationship with my with our patients right and um you know we had a lot of older people in there i'm talking about people who like in their 80s 70s yeah. 80s you know people with uh, bipolar disorder who they don't want to take their medication they want to smoke a sativa or like you know yeah. whatever it is that they're used they to. they actually benefit from it yeah, yeah yeah and you know they would be pulling out their money like every yeah. single dollar and then when the taxes came and all that it was it was insane. Yeah. And it was just so hard to see like them struggle and not be able to get their medicine. It's yeah. it's crazy because they, they, they went to tax the industry, but they also taxed the consumer that. Yeah. And made it hard for them to to, yeah. to go get their medicine. Or yeah. if they were doing it recreationally, you know, right. it, they made it a whole lot tougher. And uh, it I don't know how much longer it will last because eventually big money will come into the... Oh, I'm, I'm Come into the scenario. <laughs> well, yeah, this ain't the smoke box. So you your, like, smoke at your leisure. Too much yet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, it, it's 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 changed for the good and and the bad. Yeah. And and they still need to um, they still need to dial it in. I think you know, and yeah. definitely bring the taxes down because a lot of those people can't afford to operate under those taxes, and a lot of people can't afford to you know, consume the cannabis they want or the edible or the tinctures or whatever yeah, it is. The topicals, even those are Yeah, even that. And and uh it's, it's crazy how, how um yes. they allowed that. Sixty dollar lotion. What the fuck? I know. Right? Yeah, like, like five <laughs> milligrams of C V D. Yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a tricky world right now in the cannabis space. Do yeah. you do you do you ever uh, feel like you want to get back into it in terms of bringing a brand? Actually, yeah, lately, you know, because I, so I was telling my team over here, Bobby D presents that I, I'm, I quit drinking for, you know, I'm giving myself two months just to like rewire everything, take the toxins out, but I've been smoking way more. Okay. <laughs> I endorse <laughs> that. Yes. Yeah. Fully. And it, man, today I started a third day workout challenge. I do not work out. I'm like, you know, I'm trying to start to do something new and it's, you know, the weed motivates me. I was in my studio last night. I've. Hours went by. I was in there eight hours. You know, well, I mean, that's probably not shit, but I've been in there for four days, and it's the weed. Like right. it just it's has me hyper focused. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Well, that's you know that that's been something that uh, people talk about for a, for a long time. Is mm -hmm. that some people you know who can't function off of weed? Yeah, yeah. It's they like they shouldn't be doing shit or or trying to do something after getting high, right? But there's yeah. other people that function at a different level when they're high, right? Mm -hmm. And and most people that, like, let's just uh, say they're, they're talking about working out. Yeah. They say that it helps them focus on the workout and, like, you know, just channel everything mm -hmm. else out and they're into the workout yeah. or whatever else you're doing, you know. Yeah, it's it, like it, just you and your mind. It could you know? be, yeah, so it could be should. being creative. It could uh, be yeah. doing a painting. It could be in the studio writing or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. It just gives you that focus to stay on, on what the task is, and uh, other people don't have that gift. No, they don't. Because <laughs> so hey, man, them. I need this artwork by tomorrow. Let, hold up, let's smoke this weed, right? <laughs> and we don't see it for like a week. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But yeah. other people will just lock in. Yeah. And so you feel like, you know, now that you're you're on this different path with, mm. with uh, like fitness and all that stuff, you feel like the, the weed is helping you lock in more? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, because, you know, I have a problem with overthinking. Right. I'm sure a lot mm. of people do. But um, so that has just helped me, like, you know, give myself a routine and just, like, not get distracted by something else. Right. 
So it's been very, very helpful. Is there any particular type of strain you like when, yes. when, you're, when you're in this mode? I love uh, tangy strains. Okay. Um, anything sativa-dominant hybrids. Right. I could do. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's where most of the market is really... Yeah. I think Danny Trejo's outside. Somebody better go get him. My no way. Danny Trejo's here. Yes, we're gonna. He, you know, he 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 pop, he's popping up. He's hilarious too. <laughs> yeah, I love him. Yeah. Is Bash here too, or no Mas Trejo? No, I just I think it's just Trejo. <laughs> oh, okay. You never know though, man. I know. Yeah, he like he's you like well, you could walk in there with like two Bash and like two other people. I know. And he take a couple of hits. I'm high as giraffe nuts, man. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Eagle balls. To, to go to go back to your... <laughs> that's a good one. See, I'm high as eagle balls. I'm high as eagle balls because that's higher than giraffe nuts. It is. I think we got you, Bash. Way <laughs> what were you gonna say? You know, you said that like when you you, you stopped drinking because you you like the michelas a lot. Like oh, I would kind of know, yeah, like I kind of notice like before like you. you you really be into them, and I fuck with yeah. them too. But I just I'll stop at two. You know, you can't yeah. have one that. Oh yeah, no. And no. I I've tried my little experiments too, or like I'll like stop drinking for like a month, or yeah. like you know like two months. Yeah. I swear, there's there is it's 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 a true fact that like when you stop drinking and you enjoy it, like I have never smoked through my whole stash in a month mm -hmm. when I stop until I stopped actually drinking for like mm -hmm. a whole month, and mm -hmm. I'm just like oh shit, like I was smoking triple, like I'm just like I oh know, shit. That's that's, yeah, that's so is that what's happening yeah. to you? Like you're just it is. Dab, yeah. Have you got into the dab phase yet? Because eventually you're gonna be no. like, you know what? I need a dab now. Nah. I'd stay <laughs> with the flower. Yeah, flower. stay with flower. Stay with the flower. Yeah, yeah I recommend. Yeah, I don't that. Want, I don't hey, want but, too many chemicals. but that is true though. Like when you do have drinks, no matter what type of drink it is, whether it's a beer or like whiskey or or, or you know tequila or whatever, mm -hmm. you'll find yourself smoking more weed. Yep. I yeah. know I do. Mm -hmm. I like I, like I'll, I'll go through a lot of my shit on a night like that. I mean, but on average, like kind of lit. <laughs> yeah. Like it's when you're, it's kind of like a substitute. It just doesn't have a lot of repercussions to it, you know. It's yeah, just, man. It's the safe way. Yeah, and yeah. you get stuff done. I mean, I get stuff. done. I mean, done. you eat a lot I though. Hang like out too, watch a movie, you know, yeah. and enjoy that. You know, it all depends what you know what intention I have before I smoke. But True. I make sure to set an intention. Absolutely. Yeah. That way, it, you know, you yeah. have, you enjoy your twenty five dollar joint or whatever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> twenty five dollars. <laughs> hey, you know. these days. Yeah, yeah. I, I went to a restaurant, the cannabis restaurant, yesterday, and I got a twenty five dollar joint. What did you think of that place? It w it was. I mean, I liked it. It was awesome to be in a restaurant where everyone is just open to smoke. All you see are people giggling, like good vibes. It's like just being at home. Good <laughs> yeah, that's and rad. And it was cool. You know, it was it was. Would you go there again? Um, I would. Hmm. Actually, I would. I actually, yeah, I want to take. I went on a girls' night, a girls' day yesterday. So now I kind of want to take like my sister. All right, and bro. How they got the an food? endorsement right now. Yeah. 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 Did right. you try any yeah. of the food? Yeah, how's the food? Yeah, um, I, they had a lot of vegan options. Oh, so that's that's cool. Yeah, um, I, I still wasn't sold on your reaction. <laughs> <laughs> like they had a lot of vegan I'm not, options. I'm like not vegan, <laughs> but I still tried it, and uh, we had like animal style vegan fries. Yeah, it was it was good. You know, it was like it was like In and Out, but with you know. Without the tasty Thicker parts, fries. <laughs> yeah, without the cool onions. <laughs> um, so I, I mean, I guess the food it was average, uh, but right, we yeah. just had appetizers. But that's cool. See, you so, didn't commit fully I'm to the food, yeah, which was good. Yeah, Respect like, that. Yeah. yeah, you kept it one hundred. Drank like, water. That's awesome. Water. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. But, yeah, the weather was great. It was really nice. We we brainstormed a lot of things there, so it's a really good place to you know create a, get creative, have a meeting, and brainstorm. Anyways. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you you grew up here in L.A., right? Yeah, well, I grew up in Harbor area in uh, Carson. Well, I mean in Southern oh, California. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then right? yes, yes. Were you, oh, wait, were you a Lakers fan? You watch basketball? Um. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, how, um, how did you feel about uh, you know uh, everything going on with Kobe right now? My brother, um, Ariel, he's the one who's like a basketball fanatic. I remember him always shooting hoops. I was a little girl, and would watch Laker games with him and I seen how happy it would make him and all that and the moment that we heard the news like it was still very hard to absorb and yeah it would I and especially because he was with his daughter he, yeah heartbreaking. you know you had, yeah. you had you couldn't only see him as that hero you've seen on the TV you also have to think as a human yeah him as Just a human and a father the, yeah. and a father yeah Family so man. that was so hard like yeah talking about it right now is very emotional 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. like at LA Live, the oh, the yeah. the I memorial. The, I, w- I drove there that night. We went. We had yeah. a family dinner that night, and yeah, it was. That, I think that was. I mean, that was beautiful to see the yeah. red, the purple, and, and people gold are red. showing up from all over. That yeah. that's what's really dope about it. Is it? Yeah. It's not just people from California. It's right. people from all over the world. That this all this over. dude and and his story. Um, how it impacted people because he was such a positive figure. I mean, you know, he went through his roller coaster right. ride, but you know, the the things he w- he was doing in the community and and mm-hmm. uh, for kids is it was enormous. So the, it it impacted a lot of people. And yeah, and 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 they're saying that when they do his actual, you know, funeral yeah. thing, and uh, they're they're trying to do it at the Coliseum because yeah. that's the only place it's big enough that's big enough to to fill. You know, n- not all, not yeah. all his fans, because that's like that holds like ninety thousand people. Maybe if you stretch ninety five. Where was where was Nipsey's at held at again? Staples Center. That was Staples a Staples Center, Center. Yeah. and that's twenty thousand. Oh wow! Yeah, Kobe's. Coliseum. You mean you may, you might need two coliseums? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? but we don't an, have it. An entire city. We do. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be overflowing. Yeah, because people are gonna be coming in, not just from LA. They're gonna just be all over, all the, over world. the world. All over the world to yeah. be a part of that. He was beloved by everybody. The pro- you know, yeah. my problem is with these mm. greedy sons of bitches out there selling stuff with uh. his name on it and his face on it and charging like way, you know, like just charging any money for it, just yeah, making I've, I've money off that. of that shit. It's like, come on, man. It happens to them all, man. It does happen to them all, yeah, but it's, it's horrible. Disturbing to see. Yeah, very, very true. You know, they should, you know, have some respect have and have some like respect, his people yeah. so that they can collect. For sure, all yeah. That. Donate all the money yeah. you're making off of that shit to, you know, yeah. that that they fun Mamba on three or something like that. Opportunist right there. The yeah. moment they seen something. I think um they want to bring Danny up. Hey, let's be bit joined by one of my good friends right here, legendary Danny Trejo up hey, in hey, here. Hey, what's up? Hey man. It's good hey, to man. have you here, God bro. God bless you, man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Been waiting. <laughs> got back from Canada. Yeah, you're, so, yeah, you're a busy dude. Canadians are insane. Yeah, That's right. yeah they I've think never been there. they say there'll be a high of thirty, a low of twenty five. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, hey, hold on. there'll be a low of thirty and a lower of twenty five. It's freezing up there. What part of Canada did you go to? Uh, Toronto. Oh, that's yeah, been oh it's cold over there. Yeah, cold. Yeah. Oh yeah, I you know one time we were touring out there and uh, you know we went out. We didn't know how cold it was outside. Me and Estevan, you know Estevan yeah, Oreo yeah. from Joker Brand Soul Assassin Studio, right? We we go out. To to uh, we were trying to go down the street to this this store that was like, you know, maybe two two blocks from the hotel. We go out there and immediately the tops of our ears start Please. feeling like they were burning, like they were about to snap off. off. Frostbite. Yeah, we had to run Man, inside and find some what? hoodies and. <laughs> you talk about about homeless and when there's homeless people. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the cold got to be tough on the homeless oh, out oh, there. Now, their homeless people are another breed out there. They oh, like yeah. they sleep on top of uh, heaters, the heaters, heaters yeah, from yeah. like the buildings and yeah. shit. Well, they've yeah. been doing it for a while on on a you know a, yeah. a whole different level because the 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 cold out there is but, unbearable. Uh, there's like, not too yeah, many I though. Did a, I do. I did a the program called American Gods. I did that, so that was kind of cool. A program? Yeah, it's a yeah. TV series on. On Star, one of those, one yeah. of those new stations. How was it doing that one? It was cool. It was really yeah. cool. It was really, uh, what do you call it, like uh, science fiction. You know, I play a, a a changer. I'm one of them people that changes yeah. into different people. So that's like, that's a crazy role that, like, you from, like, your early career going on, from, like, all the crazy, like, yeah. Maton roles that they, they always gave you to, he like, number from, one. yeah, from you, <laughs> and then you're being the sci-fi guy and being a dude that just... Hey. The Listen, changes it's like funny because I played inmate number one the first five years of my career. I yeah, never had yeah. a name. You know yeah, I mean? in fact, the first name I ever got was Art Sanella in Death Wish Four. I played an Italian. I didn't play Mexican. Mm. Art Sanella, <laughs> yeah, you're Italian. Okay. <laughs> it, you know it is because you did do all those yeah. those movies in the beginning, and they they sometimes try to typecast people, but. You you've been able to do all kinds of shit. I mean, even do your own thing, like the 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 Machete series. <laughs> yeah. That's a cult, that's cult classic. They'll yeah. always follow that. Hey. People are waiting for the Everybody next one. Still. Yep. They ask you every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yep. Got a machete in the coat. 
That, so, I, mean, I mean, they always ask you when is the next one, right? Yeah. The first time I had seen you, like, in, in, in a role that was different from, like, you know, like being on my throne or an inmate, uh, it was, number one, it was Spy Kids first. You know what I, I mean? And, and, the, and, that was, and then I started, and then one of my favorite shows, which I'm glad I finally get to ask you about, King of the Hill. I fucking love that show. How do you even end up working with somebody like Mike Judge and you just, like, you play Octavio? Mike, I, you know what? I met Mike Judge in uh, Austin, Texas. What we were doing. It, it makes we're, sense. This show's based on Texas. And we started talking, blah, 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 blah. He goes, you know what? You've got to be on this show. And then, you know, all of a sudden, at first, they he drew a picture of me with a tattoo, <laughs> and it was the other guy, the the, the Native American guy. I John Redcorn. Right? Yeah. yeah. And and I said, Mike, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the tattoo made it look like me, so he that's why I got... I got a uh, Octavio. Octavio, yeah. Did you and do Hank Enrique's? Hill was my best friend. <laughs> Did you do Enrique's voice too? Yeah. All yeah, oh, the work. I, I, the, your laugh is just ideal, man. It's just... we had uh, we had so much fun with that, and that's in fact when when I, when I met uh, what was her name? Uh, little girl that OD'd. A little girl that died. Uh, oh, Brittany Murphy. Brittany yeah, Murphy. She was so she would show up in pajamas sometimes. Just really? show up to do her stuff, and yeah. she was so nice, man. Really, really, real sweet. Made, yeah, made you feel like part of the cast immediately. Yeah, some people, you know, they go too young. You know, rest, rest in yeah. peace. Her, God, man. Kobe. God, I need another angel. Yeah, I, th- I that hit the whole city, man. Yeah. We were just talking yeah. about it just like, yeah. uh, with Trish and and uh, you know how her brother was like a longtime Laker fan. Yeah, you know, he was I the think. first person I hit up. Oh my God, did you hear? And I'm, yeah. yeah, you know, you know when when uh, when when uh, I, I did a commercial with Kobe. I did a, the Black Mamba commercial that the shoes when he first came out. And Carmen, my girlfriend, had a had a son, and her his dad were like crazy Laker feet. I mean, they would go like the whole dressed up completely. They looked like they were From on the team. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and uh, they would sit, you know, like you know the, the I always call them the Mexican seats up. There. <laughs> <laughs> the nosebleeds, yeah. Everybody <laughs> comes over from work and goes straight to and uh, and uh, but they never missed a game. And then he passed away. the The dad passed away, and the, the son was oh, going wow. into depression. Yeah. And I was doing a commercial, so I will bring him down. You know. Mm. And Carmen said, "Well, you know, ask ask Kobe because I don't want to hurt. You know, I know how you guys are on the set. I asked Kobe, Kobe, bring him down, bring him down. I swear to God, Kobe's talking to all the big wigs. When we showed up, Kobe yells, out, Christopher, hey, come here, come here.' Mm. A kid almost fainted. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. And then." Every time they would say cut, Kobe would shoot hoops with him. Mm. So what a, you know, I, mean, I just thought, man, that's a man. That's a, because, I mean, he's doing, he's doing a yeah. $60 yeah. million dollar commercial, right? And, and he, and would, he, and he yeah, took the time out. Time out for a, a kid. You yeah, know, so you, awesome. you take the time out to talk yeah. to kids, right? <laughs> yeah, you have to. Yeah. That's who makes us. I believe that's so. That's who makes us, the fans. Man. And you watch everybody that starts getting too big for the fans, <laughs> career dies. Done. I mean, those are the that that's who makes you. I mean, that's who we yeah. do it for as artists in the first place, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys have worked together before, right? Yeah, yeah, we have. Uh, I have a s- few vocals yeah. on yes. on, uh, on Trail's my, music. A trail of music. Soul I told you I started a, a record label. That's with, right. With uh, with uh, Baby Bash and Nido, uh, and I had started it with someone else, but they they got me for a lot of money, and and then I ran into Bash, and Bash just said, "Well, let's do it," and so. Bam, we did it, and, and it, it was doing really well. That we, one, and we're getting ready to drop Chicano Soul Shop Volume Two. I hope she's on it. That's what's up, <laughs> and we love Bash. We're all, you know, we're all Bash fans, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was that's gonna, my God. I was, that's the last, the Volume One was the first project, and you came out yeah. as soon as you dropped the label, and then it's crazy because, you know, that's like that almost when I saw like. Yeah. Cause I would see the taggings yeah. in it, cause you know I like listening to old school type of stuff like that. But it's cool cause you integrated new stuff. Yeah. But it's like you created a soundtrack for the car shows, you know? Yeah. What I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, new soundtrack. Yeah, it's like there a used new to, soundtrack. Yeah, cause there used to be back in the day East Side Stories. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. This is like, like a thump records. Yeah, like, thump records. Yeah. I love it. I mean, it's like an oldie. That's me anyway. You yeah, know I mean? you're you're a big Art LeBeau a, fan. Got Trish. You got Tara New. We've got a whole bunch of people coming in. I got a a, a singer called. Little Twixie, and she was. Uh, in fact, I started the record late. Everything I've ever done to help somebody. That's right. it's like, and it's like everything good that's ever happened. To me. I started a record label to help Twixie, who 
who her and her mom were living in a battered woman's shelter, and we mm. started that, and then, and then uh, she, you know, had to hit the bridge, and and uh, so, but I already had Tara, so we started. Let's do it. So we just did it. Yeah. And now we Twixie. I never throw anybody away. Yeah. She got a year clean. I said, let's do it. Nice. You know, so she'll like be on that. the next album. You know what I mean? That's and dope. Can't. You know, it's the saddest thing in the world. Every time you go to juvenile hall to talk, is see all these kids that feel like they've been thrown away. You know? Yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of them have. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, parents that weren't ready to be parents or shouldn't have been. Yeah. You know, because that's, that, that's a whole different tra- set of skills right there. Yeah. And, you know. That's a grown up. Yeah. Yeah, I, said, and, and, I love them. I see them dads with their kids. And I see them mom. I love them, man. You know what I mean? God. I, uh, it's funny. It's like my, my, my kid's mom, you know, we split up 20 years ago. Man. And then she remarried, had two kids, and her old man left. So it's my kid's mom. Yeah. So, it's like, so we, me and my kid take care of her, you know, and, and uh, we put her through law school now. She's a lawyer for uh, special needs children. Mm. Anybody out there with special needs children, call me. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, that's that's the cool thing, you know, that I always recognized, you know, about you is that you you never forgot where you came from because, it, you know, it was a tough road getting where, you, where, you've, uh, where you've gotten. But you never forget the people, you know, on that road. And that, I think that's fucking awesome. And you, you actually take the time. You're one of those guys who takes the time, and and uh, you know because we know in this industry a lot of people don't. Yeah, they fucking don't like to see the ugly things. So you know it's blinders on, and it's it's the easiest thing to act like the shit ain't there, but it's it's dope how you recognize it and you actually go to it and do something about it. So many blessings, <laughs> Papa. Many blessings yeah, for that. Yeah. How, how's the Trejo's Tacos doing? We're killing it. We're killing I know it. you are. God, man. Like, so <laughs> you know what I said? That that how everything everything good that's happened to me happened as a result of helping someone else. I did a low budget movie. Right? They didn't have any money, but they said, you know, hey, can we do it? Yeah, yeah, okay. So they needed a name, right? So, and uh, while I'm doing this film, one of the producers says. Why don't you open a restaurant, Danny? Because I like good food. I don't. I don't. You know, I don't eat junk food, you know. So I said, Trails Tacos. Two weeks later, he brought me a business plan, and it wasn't bad. So. And you couldn't say no. Three years later, we got seven restaurants. You know? Seven restaurants. Yeah. That's and awesome. And one donut shop. We got to send this guy to do a high and hungry episode down there. Yeah, you know, we just oh, opened yeah. a. We just opened a. Uh, what do you call it? A grub hub or whatever. I don't uh, Oh yeah, the uh, kind of uh, grub hub. On the west side. So people are calling in ordering food and yeah. like, Did you ever think it was that was that a part of the plan or is that just it just popped up from, from that guy's you, ideas? You, I never thought I'd get out of prison. <laughs> 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 so I've been on God's time since nineteen sixty eight. You know what I mean? See, like, God works. <laughs> yes. You know, they don't think so, but it he yeah, does. God buddy, does definitely God. work. Yeah. I mean, basically, 68, I was headed for the gas chamber. And, you know, by the grace of God, 1969, I got out of prison. Ain't look back, you know. You know, it, and, and, and that's, a, that's a big thing because most people get institutionalized quickly in there, especially because, you know, obviously you go in there for something. And while waiting, you know, to go to court, you get into another beef that eventually yeah, stacks done, more yeah, time. Absolutely. And eventually, you know, you get used to being you in know, there. If somebody tries to, if somebody tries to rape you, or kill you in prison, and you hurt them, you get a life sentence. Yeah, I just mean, defending like, yourself. It, it doesn't matter. There's no such yeah, thing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just defending yourself, you could catch more time, and it ain't gonna matter. And and that's when people get institutionalized. They get used to that whole life. Prison is the only place in the world. Or every morning you have to decide whether you're going to be predator or prey. Every morning. Yeah. Like, what am I going to be happy? Yeah. And so you predator, then you, you might stay alive. <coughs> prey, dead. Prey, yeah. No, it's, it's, yeah. That's why you got to make good choices, people. What's our next song? <laughs> What's our next? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do I'm going to do a duet with her. Don't get mad. Okay? Oh, really? All right. Let's talk about that. That's loco la cabeza. 
I'm going to do your song. <laughs> All right. I'll endorse that all day. Let's make some t shirts. It's going good. Yeah. But the record label's going good. The, the, and and uh, my little fighter won the. So you got a guy, you're, you're, you're got a, a girl. Oh, you got a girl. There's a little girl. Her dad got out of prison. Boxing or, or boxing. MMA? Okay, when boxing. She was eight years old. Her dad got out of prison. He started training two older brothers. So they'd go to the gym. She'd go to the gym with him. I want to box, daddy. I want to box. No, no, it's for boys. It's for boys. They kept telling her it's for boys. So finally, her dad got this 11 year old boy and said, you know what? Look, I don't want you to hurt her. But I want you to convince her she don't want to box. It's okay, okay. She kicked the shit out of this kid. <laughs> <laughs> she jumped, out. and then she didn't know how to box. But she had that fighting. She yeah. had him on the ground trying to kick him. No, wait, wait. They put. It's okay. She had a fighting spirit. Yeah. I went down to Mexico with her. She won the WBA, the WBC World Champion flyweight. She's 108 pounds, and then. On the Canelo undercard, you saw her win the WBA mm. world champion. So she's got two belts right now. She's stepping it up. Cenice Estrada is bad. Hey, I got to say, you know, like women's boxing in that particular uh, category, the weight, it's exciting. Those like, girls throw they, down. They stole the, the show. The two girls, they stole the show. Yeah. Look, after that, the Canelo fight was kind of like, yeah, okay. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, women are stepping it up in those yeah, in those okay. areas, man. I like, have a homegirl who she does um, uh, Muay Thai. Yeah. And I've seen the whole process like that they have to go through for like the weight to meet yeah. weight. The training, they the look diet. They like zombies. Like they are just, but it's, so, hey, it's crazy. And as soon as they weigh them and they pass it, oh, we're going yeah. to Tony Roma's or whatever. They go put that weight on real quick. It, it was, I, you know, I have that much more respect for fighters now that I see. Yeah. It's a discipline. 108 yeah. pounds. Pretty as she is. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> and can fight. God, man. I was watching her sparring. They got to get boys for her to spar. There are too many girls. If you're her boyfriend, you better know how to box yeah, so you, you can dodge those punches. <laughs> you better be polite. When, when you do something dumb. <laughs> get, Don't fuck up. Catch a left hook real quick. <laughs> yeah, she's sweet. But everything's going good. Man. Like I said, the restaurants are all doing good. We're closing the Pasadena one because it's... Uh, too seasonal. It's with the Pasadena Playhouse. Right. You know, so it's too seasonal. My, but my two uh, business partners, they're geniuses at, at, at location. So you're finding a, other Maybe locations. We need one, need one in Long Beach. You got saying. it, man. We do. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now, I live uh, out there. Santa Monica, and then by the promenade, we're opening one, and then uh, Denver, Colorado wants one. Yeah. And then New York. You got to give it to them. Wow. Mm -hmm. You got to give it to them. In, in all the movies you've been been in, who was the most annoying motherfucker <laughs> to get down with? <laughs> you know what? Uh, I I I always kind of like make sure that nobody gets too annoying. You know, right. I have a way of telling people, you know, back up off me. You know, yeah. And, 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 and I w I imagine they, they do quickly. Like, you know, there's a couple of people that you've. Had to take a side, you know, and say, hey, I'll beat you to death, fool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. You're you know. taking their role too serious. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, well, that's the biggest problem is that actors, like, like they'll do a, a karate movie and all of a sudden. They, they're they an want, expert. They think they're like, you know, Jackie Chan or something. Like that. They, I'll slap you silly, fool. So, some, you know, because that, that's the thing you, you, you hear is it that, you know, some actors, they get caught up in the, the roles they play. And they absorb it so yeah. much that they kind of, when they're even when they're not in yeah. doing that it role was, anymore, they're that you, guy. Yeah, they uh, liked that character, yeah. so they stick to it. Yeah, it was it's 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 amazing. But like I said, acting is acting. You got to be able to turn it on and turn it off real quick. You know? Yeah, that when I go to that character, I was that character. So a lot of times, I don't want to stay there. Yeah, you know, I'll I'll be immediately go play with my kids or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait a minute, I don't want to be that, that guy mindset. anymore. <laughs> You know, I, I think one of the one of the ones that was you know like one of the standout was when you did the the Robert Rodriguez flick the um, um the um, uh, with, was it plan no. no 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 with Clooney and uh, who with Clooney and um, that was yeah that was, oh, that was oh, from oh. Dust to Dawn yeah, Dust to Dawn yeah, that was a vampire oh yeah. my yeah. god 
How, how was it doing that one? It was awesome. And Clooney is one of the nicest guys you've ever met. And you know how people get like to be that big. And he's still, I mean, he's still yeah. a comedian. He's still he's just a sweetheart, man. Everybody on that movie was really cool. Yeah. Selma. Selma. You know, she's just, God, she's go to hell beautiful. You know what I mean? It's like she's, she's yeah. just so down to earth. And she just married the, one of the richest guys in the world. Was it hard to concentrate? Huh? Was it hard oh, to concentrate when she was around? <laughs> <laughs> they got what well, Robert did. He went around, got some of the most gorgeous strippers, you know, that weren't afraid to like you know, dance and stuff, and uh, and you put them all in that movie. And Selma, Selma, God, Selma, God, they're such beautiful. Shut up, Selma. They'll all be bringing you coffee in a minute. You know, they, they were. The, they could. They thought she was just gorgeous. You know? Yeah. And the funny thing about that movie, she. Definitely afraid of snakes. Really? Oh, and she had that. Yeah, and yeah. Robert said, well, you know what? We have to do the snake dance. So if you can... She took that snake home and kept it in a cage there to get used to it. No way. You know I mean? Yeah, and then... Yeah. Boy, and, and it weighed. The snake weighed 80 pounds. Yeah, that looked like she a big... She only weighs 105. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a big fucking snake. <laughs> but that was, it was fun to watch her. So machete... Oh God, man! Tell Robert, or come on, Robert, or come on, Robert, right sucker, yeah. Robert, what's up? I'm, I'm writing one right now called uh, 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 Cuchillo or something. Cuchillo, yeah. <laughs> the spin-off. Filero, yeah. Before he was Machete. Yeah, he was Filero. He was Filero. filero. <laughs> no, I'll say, I'll say the way that that whole thing was written out, it was, it was, it was pretty fucking cool. Like how it, you know, that that one trailer led into. Yeah. Well, you know what? We talked about Machete when we did. Desperado. Yeah. About my, let's do Machete. Then when we did Spy Kids, we said, let's name him Uncle Machete. Mm. And then when they want the, uh, what was it, Grindhouse, they wanted some fake trailers, so we put that in there. When we came out of the out of the uh, premiere for Grindhouse, everybody said, man, we got to do that movie. Because the, the, the one thing everybody said after seeing that was like, hey, when's that coming out? Yeah, that's it. I mean, everybody thought fig- figured it was like a, a trailer, trailer to something. So we did it. That was awesome. It was amazing. That was we did aw- that. Then we did Machete Kills, and now Robert's gonna do Machete Kills in space. Yeah, hurry up, Machete. Space. See, machete hey, listen, he space. just said it. He just said it. He just, we're, it's gonna manifest right now, just <laughs> because we fucking said it right yeah, now. That's true. Say it and it'll happen. Say it and it'll happen. That's I believe it. I believe in that. Do you believe in that? Absolutely, man. We just did it. We just did it. Yeah. See, he's so cool. <laughs> Simple I, uh, as that. We used to just stay on the valley, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Me yeah. Michelle, I love it. Oh, <laughs> Were you in the valley? No, I'm in Long Beach. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I have family Let's out here in the custom. valley, but yeah. Yeah. Is there, is there a role that like you you turned down just because you're like I'm not doing that shit? <laughs> uh, well, you know what? Depend on the check. I'll look at the I'll look at the check. Let, let me ask you this. I mean, my when my agent said you're gonna play Marsha Brady, I said, well, how much are you gonna pay? Okay, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you, I'll be Marsha. I did a Snickers commercial for the Super Bowl. Yeah. And yeah, I remember that. Boy, well, that was they don't they pay. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, they she pay. She said there's one problem because the Super Bowl is like the Holy Grail for a. Oh yeah, for an actor. I mean, it's you know, it, yeah. It's like, well, it's bigger than the Oscars. Yeah. And so, she says you're gonna be a Super Bowl commercial. I said, really? You have one problem. You're gonna be Marsha Brady. I said, what's the check look like? Shoes. <laughs> Huge. I'm, I'll be Marsha. Do I got a dime? <laughs> I mean, listen. Every every uh, every commercial that gets played. In 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 the in the Super 30 Bowl, seconds. thirty, 30 seconds. Million. It's ten million dollars. This year it was ten million, and in, in, yeah. in depending on the length, it was twenty million. So that's, that's how much they get paid. Oh. But what what was it like doing the movie Heat? That was awesome. That real that actually pushed my my credibility. Up yeah, I was working with De Niro, Pacino, Val Kilmer, all the greats, know, uh, John Voight, all in the same movie. You know, so yeah. So, uh, that that and Michael Mann says you held your own, you know. <laughs> you, you did, you did. I mean, because I mean, when you think about it, you mentioned all them names. Tom Sizemore was in that with you guys, right? Tom, yeah. And uh, I mean, yeah, that's those are all heavy actors, and you held yours in that for and sure. That's, that's like I said, boom, boom. That was that was uh, the one that launched. 
and that you know because they 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 I think they found that the the that you had all this this different um you know your ability to change characters I yeah. think you know what's funny is me and Eddie Bunker good friend of mine we were back in the pen together and all that but Eddie was a bank robber and 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 I, I was an armed robber and we actually went on that set as uh, armed robbery consultants <laughs> right. and then Michael Mann saw me and I had done uh, like you I, I had, want you <laughs> in this movie I, I had done a, a Camarina Drug Wars with him Michael Mann was a good friend of my uncle Gilbert's in Folsom when he did the Jericho Mayo he, yeah he met that's an old school so movie they, yeah. he said hey Gilbert no no I'm Danny I did that oh yeah come on show me that role and that was it we I was in heat and that was it. That was it. <laughs> and then it, it, then it was bananas from there. I mean, you know, yeah. to do some of the work you've done, man, that's it's awesome, man. I've been blessed. I've really, really been blessed. The funny thing right now, I'm going, uh, I'm going to be the grand marshal. Me and Cheech Marin are going to be the grand marshals in the uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade in Arkansas. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> is this like a setup? <laughs> yeah. Are, are they planning on sacrificing that's, two Mexicans or that, what? Because we're going back to Arkansas to do the. I said, okay, cool. I'll, I'll do that. St. Patrick's Day? Yeah, Saint I'm Patrick in, Day. in the most unlikely of things, right? <laughs> yeah, like St. Patty's Day? Like, is, is any of you ha like half Irish or something? Like, <laughs> funny, man. Like, One third. I'll, I'll be Mac Trejo. I'm Mac Trejo. MC Trejo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's going to be fun. McTrejo. <laughs> yeah, McTrejo, McTrejo. McTrejo. Well, there was a lot of Irish. There was a whole lot of Irish down in Mexico for a long time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Germans, too. Yeah. There's, yeah. yeah. You'd be surprised. French, it's crazy. Germans. French, Germans, yeah. A lot of Spaniards. <laughs> <laughs> Word up, man. So what's what's next for you right now? Uh, I'm doing that. I'm doing a Comic-Con in Philadelphia, I think. And uh, uh, I'm trying to do this one film called... Uh, Social Security right now with uh, um, a lot of the older actors in in Hollywood that haven't worked for a long time. Oh, yeah. We're trying to bring them in, and and uh, I talked to Anne Margaret. Oh wow! I talked to some different people that said, "Wow, they'd be interested." In it. That's and, old school. God, Anne Margaret is just still beautiful. Yeah, and I seen her. I said, "Damn, you're still fine." Lady. <laughs> <laughs> and she's been doing the movies since the what late fifties or the sixties, yeah. right? Yeah. So are you kidding? She did a God. She worked with Elvis Presley and. Oh, and, uh, oh yeah. Uh, well, she did a movie. She did a movie called Stagecoach a long time ago. Yeah. Not not the original one, but the second. One. Yeah. She also did that thing with Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau some years back with. Well, she's uh, still gorgeous. Yeah. With. I can't remember I who's in that movie. I'm kind of still. I got a poster of you. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Trish? You got any shows coming up? Yeah, I have um, March. No, yeah, March twenty first. Yeah, I think it's March twenty first at the Toyota Arena in Ontario with yeah. uh, for Zap's fortieth anniversary. Oh, that's so I'll gonna be, there be with tight. Zap, Brentwood, Barbara Mason, yeah, NB Riders, that. yeah, Ash. So that's my next upcoming one. Have you played with Zap before, or is this the first yeah. one? No, I believe I have. Yeah. Yeah. How's that yeah. show like? Oh, you. Know, I mean, because that's all those know. hits we grew up to. Yeah. Crazy. They, when they save them for last year, and everyone's I think up. It was for a, like a Curious Radio Entertainment Festival. I think you were on the lineup, and Zap was in there, too. It was it was like one of these curious. festivals out there. Like in his, I think it was in Orange County, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure, yeah. They, they have a lot of oldies events out there, and I was, that's when I seen you perform one of the times. Oh, really? I was like, yeah, it was a dope lineup. It was like when you had Burley done the... It was a bit, yeah, it was a bit of everything. It was yeah. Awesome. They always like bring those like older groups like back in there. It's like a big function. What were your favorite oldies, Danny? Uh, just a couple. Art LeBeau, my God. I still ticket, man. He still, still <laughs> Yeah, I just did a... We were just with him out in uh, Orange County. And then uh, this Saturday night, Armani Legion Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Fabulous Flames. Yeah. yeah. He still yeah. does radio. Not radio, but like he does the internet. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I, uh, He's got an extensive library of all the, the old school stuff like that. I mean, he's got it. Well, right? he loves us. And yeah. Loves Trish, you know? 
Oh, he has to. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> she does. She does. I think she does it. Yeah. Like in the spirit of you know those old school artists, but like it you Just know wonderful. nails it like right now. Because some yeah. some people try to you know do that and they sort of oversing it, yeah. or or maybe they can't get the the vibe of it, but. You know, there are some that like actually lock in, and Trish is one of the ones that locks in for sure. You know how much that means to me? Oh, come Coming on. out of your mouth right now, let me just say that. You know, like I said, I, I picked the songs that meant value to me, and I was able to reflect that. Did them justice. Yeah. yeah. So I'm glad you acknowledged that, and thank you. Right on. Thank you. Well, I want to thank both of you for uh, you. taking the time to sit down with us. Um, man, it's an honor get, to have get you. Get ready for volume two, homie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, volume two. Hey, let me ask you this before we go. Has anybody approached you on doing a cannab- cannabis brand with you? I mean, they you have to I'm have. Doing, I'm, I think I'm getting ready to do a, not a cannabis, but uh, uh, CBD, CBD, topical. Oil. Yeah, so oh, some yeah. people are coming up with some pretty good, pretty good uh contract yeah you know and and like i got a bad shoulder they're actually gonna replace my whole shoulder mm. and mm. i've been putting it off and but i've been using that this that, the cbd the cbd the, and yeah. i haven't needed to go back to the doctor yeah. so you but, know i'm thinking well wait i'll just wait yeah you know, it's great <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's it's great for inflammation yeah, yeah. So, that's you know, you know so. it's like, i mean i there was before i started using it i couldn't raise my arm yeah you know and uh right I, now i'm I might throw a football as far as Drew Brees. <laughs> <laughs> who, did, hey, who did you think was going to win? You know what? Super? I thought the, the 49ers. We, a lot of us did. I took the 49ers and I took the under yeah. for a lot of money. So I lost on the 49ers, but I you, won on the under, so it canceled yeah. it. So <laughs> hey, man. That's all right. The win cancels out the yeah. loss. Huh? The win cancels out the yeah. The win of the money cancels out the loss of who you wanted to you actually. Know, so I won, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, as long as you walk away with your money, you won. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Salute to the Kansas City Chiefs for their, their yeah. win in the oh, Super Bowl. Awesome, awesome. That was a great you game. Know what? Uh, you know what? Uh, uh, blessings to Kobe's family, man. Yeah. It's just like, that was such a loss. He was just such a beautiful man. I'm yeah. going to tell you something. It's the only man I've ever seen that could that could make a make a sucker drop his gun with a smile. Yeah. I mean, you could put a gun on that sucker, and if he smiles you, you say, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> or they just fan out. Have you ever seen just such a just smile? With his, with his just, yeah. Oh man, his whole face smile. Then. Or they or they fan out yeah. like they're totally fans. Yeah. Oh shit! Can I have an autograph? Hold up, let me get an autograph. <laughs> Word up. Yeah. Man, he was beautiful, man. Yeah. His kids were beautiful, and and uh, his wife was you know just going oh, yeah. gorgeous, but but uh, but uh, yeah. And, and he, he he loved people. He loved his fans. I think all the tributes to him and his daughter have been great. And uh, you know we send prayers to that family and the other families as my, well. Uh, yeah. My singer Twixie, she uh, she went to the memorial with her little her little box and was singing uh, corridos, oh, love yeah, Mexican they, music, right? For him, you know, yeah. No yeah. Oh yeah. I they all like, out there. You know, they loved mariachis, and uh, that was awesome. Yeah. Oh, I will miss him. Great guy. Love you, Kobe. Love him. We will miss him. And his daughter. But, daughter was all. Awesome. Yeah. We won't I'll forget them. Yeah. They're no. a part of L.A. always. Yeah, that's it. Hell yeah. Los Angeles, Kobe. Right on. This has been another Dr. Green Thumb show or Dr. Green Thumb podcast. Dr. Green Thumb. That's right. With Trish Killer, <laughs> Danny Trejo, E-Zone, C- and the rest of the Treehouse crew. Uh, we'll be back with another one, but thank you for watching this one. Uh, before we go, uh, where can they find you? Uh, Trish Killer right here. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook under Trish Killer and on YouTube, Trish Toledo. Me? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think the original Danny Trejo. Uh, the original. I think it is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, just look for just Danny put, Trejo. Just put D and he'll pop up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week.